Hello and welcome back to another episode of Super Crooks Unveiled. Months after release, I've returned to the amazing piece of media that is Super Crooks to compare to the Mark Miller original comic versus the Netflix anime adaptation. After reading the comic, I can easily say the show delivered far more and far better of a narrative with very minor but specific details changing. I'll be trying to keep the book spoilers to a minimum and note the specific differences versus critiquing the book itself, so leave a like and subscribe if you have it. And first off, in issue one of Super Crooks, we don't start with the same story of Johnny Bolt nor the introduction of his friends Kismet or Transmit or their powers. We simply have Johnny, Frostbite, and Frostbite's brothers committing a crime on Johnny's wedding day. Seems like Frostbite was the real bad influence of the group to be honest, but this leads them to scrambling onto a subway in the Gladiator capturing and beating the living hell out of them. The difference here also being that it was Gladiator who left onto the train after Johnny and his crew, not the Praetorian, even having the same line about sending a team to the next station when he was done wrapping up. And here's where we get the five year time skip versus the events of the first heist failure in the anime. The second part of the first issue features the story of Carmine, aka The Heat, and his unfortunate hubris in trying to scam the Salamander's casino. That still ends with Walt Flanagan dying. Again, The Heat's hubris and recklessness still gets Walt killed. Johnny and Casey's reunion still takes place, but not quite the same as The Heat appears at the very diner they're at asking for help, and is where Johnny makes the statement they need to get the old team back together. In issue two of the comic, they recruit members we've come to know halfway through the season like Ghost, TK, The Diesel Brothers, and Forecast. I'm gonna note I feel after reading the comics there's a certain lack of depth missing that is understandable when it's a four issue comic series versus a multi episode animated series, but still, even as a comic it is is an incredibly short read. Moving forward, the differences start to become more apparent, with Johnny's plan to blackmail the gladiator originally including a scene of Praetorian beating up people who were sitting on the bastard's limo. Here's where Johnny explains why they're going after the bastard and how, and the story of the man that betrayed the bastard and had his entire life eviscerated, was also told here, versus at the start of the series in Supermax like the show did. In issue 3, we still get to see the meeting between Casey and Roddy and the bastard, with a time machine and Roddy's Princeton degree both still being quite relevant. The crew's plan is basically the same as the show but still ending with the Praetorian and Bastard intercepting Casey at the airport before she could leave. In issue 4 we get the grand finale, with Casey being brought back to the Bastard's fortress. The crew does successfully find Matt's infinite space briefcase that contains all his fortunes. After interrogating Casey, the Praetorian is still dispatched. The major difference here being he kept his powers and did the whole multi-clone ability and beat the hell out of Johnny and the crew while the gladiators still watch. Key difference here being in the show, once Gladiator Gladiator stepped in, Praetorian did a little fighting back before he got clapped. In the comic, Praetorian is left bumbling like a baby while the Gladiator walks him down and one-shots him, leaving him with an, I quote, permanent brain damage. From here, the story went kind of the same way, because you can't really spin conclusions in too many different ways. The bastard fooled by Casey's mental trickery realizes his painting, which should be perfect, is fake. Then he realizes he killed his assistant Miguel, not Casey. But the twist is that instead of the cave like we see in the show, Max is actually left stranded at an abandoned amusement park. The crooks go on to live the pretty much same equivalent as their anime counterparts, nearly exactly. Only other difference I think is noteworthy is that the bastard didn't bl start by blowing up Salamander's head, but he kind of like killed everyone in the room instantly. It was interesting to note the differences I saw while reading the comic, and I encourage any of you to go check it out. It's a really good read that expands the lore of the Super Crooks world ever so much more. If you spot any differences, let me know below in the comments and leave a like to let me know you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Unveiled, everybody.